Almost universally, we use words to comfort ourselves in times of need. From the Blessing Way prayer used by the Navajo of the American Desert Southwest or the Diné people as they know themselves in their own tongue, to honor natural order in times of chaos, to the Old Testament priestly blessing discovered on two tiny silver scrolls dating to nearly 3,000 years ago, world history is filled with examples of words that have soothed, comforted, and protected us. Individually and collectively, formally and informally, out loud and under our breath, through the ages, we humans have enjoyed special words to help us navigate the most difficult moments of life. If we think of our creations as the expression of ideas that live within us, then our art, film, music, and writing take on a meaning of something more than simple entertainment. Such a relationship between our inner and outer worlds leads us to view our inspiration as consciousness informing itself, reminding us of our untapped possibilities and potential. From this perspective, the spiritual traditions of our past and the words that preserve them are living examples that reveal a timeless communication. In writing the Wisdom Codes, I envisioned a collection of trusted words that we've historically turned to in times of need, distilled into an easy-to-read, quick-access, modern-day manual. This group of revered prayers, mantras, chants, and hymns is designed to provide reassurance, protection, and healing when life brings danger, hurt, unspeakable loss, and self-doubt to our doorstep. In such times, even the most well-meaning support, family and friends, often falls short of finding its way into the dark void of our emotional abyss. In such times, all we may have is ourselves, and ultimately, that's all we need. Once I understood this simple truth, it made perfect sense that we already have the power to rewire our brains on demand and in doing so to choose to self-regulate the way we respond to life's extremes. Quote, I don't know if what I'm afraid of is the state of the world. Rather, I think what I'm afraid of is the state of my attitude about the state of the world. End of quote. These words were spoken by therapist and life coach Craig D. Lounsborough, and they echo what many people tell me they're feeling in the world today. Because all humankind shares certain fears, we have a universal sense that we sometimes need refuge and protection. The ancient Hebrew Zohar, the foundational text of the mystical Kabbalah, describes how Psalm 91 protected the prophet Moses the second time he climbed to the top of Mount Sinai, which is the time that he received the Ten Commandments. The Zohar describes how Moses was enveloped during his ascent by a mysterious cloud of unknown substance and unknown origin. The cloud became so dense that he could no longer see ahead of him, nor could he be seen by those who were watching him from below the cloud. Moses didn't know what was happening and what the cloud meant or what to expect. He didn't know if he'd ever reunite with his family, his friends, and his followers again, and it was during this time of uncertainty and fear that Moses composed and recited Psalm 91 for his own protection. And for reasons that he attributed to the power of this prayer, Moses, in fact, was protected. He continued to climb until he reached the top of Mount Sinai, where he received the stone tablets inscribed with instructions that have been the primary law for the followers of the Jewish and the Christian faith for the last 3,000 plus years. Although Moses' original prayer in its entirety consisted of 16 verses, it's often abbreviated to only the first two verses that follow for ease of use and when time is of the essence. The abbreviated prayer goes as follows. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Well, a closer look at this prayer reveals that the source of the protection it provides comes from the deeper layers of the meaning that may be known by those who understand the code. The Coded Names of God 
While entire books have been dedicated to revealing the mystery of Moses' prayer protection, in the following discussion, I will focus upon the coded names for God that are found throughout the prayer and the protection they provide us, starting with the words, Most High. Coded name number one, Most High. The first encoded name of God in this prayer is Most High. In Biblical Hebrew, this is typically translated from Aramaic, the original language of the scriptures, as El Elyon, meaning God Most High or God the Highest, indicating that nothing can be greater or more powerful than the essence of the force represented in this name. The application of this word code is clearly seen in the Old Testament book of Genesis, chapter 14, verses 18 through 20. The words state, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of the heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. End of quote. The second of God's hidden names is the word Almighty, and is typically translated by Near Eastern scholars from Aramaic as the word Shuddai, meaning Almighty, or El Shuddai, meaning God Almighty. This is one of the seven names of God that are substituted for God's actual name over 6,800 times in the Hebrew Bible. The other six names are Aya, meaning I will be, Savat, meaning host, Elohim, meaning God's, El, meaning God, and Eloah, also meaning God. Coded name three, Lord. The third coded name is perhaps the most direct, mysterious, and powerful. It is the personal name of God, Yahweh. Following the initial revelation of his identity to Moses on Mount Sinai as I am, Moses asked for a clarification as to how he should address God when in his presence. The reply was the one-time revelation of God's personal name to the people of the earth. In the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verses 2 and 3, God stated to Moses in no uncertain terms, quote, I am Yahweh, end of quote. In the earliest records of the Hebrew Bible, before the writing of the authoritative 6th century Masoretic texts, God's personal name is clearly identified as Yahweh. Because Orthodox Jewish tradition holds this name so sacred, however, it is never to be written or spoken as a common word. It's for these reasons that God's personal name was removed and replaced approximately 6,800 times in the Hebrew Bible with alternative names such as Adonai, Elohim, and Lord. Coded name four, God. The fourth coded name, God, is translated from the Hebrew Elohim and is the most common name used for God in the Old Testament. While there continues to be uncertainty and mystery as to the precise translation of this word, it is typically associated with God, the Creator. The first insights into the nature of this mysterious word are found in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, where the first sentence states, quote, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, end of quote. In this reference, God is referred to in the singular as the Creator. Later, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, however, we are given a deeper sense of the power of this creation. Genesis 1, 27 begins, quote, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, end of quote, indicating that humankind is a reflection of a singular essence. Yet in the second part of the same sentence, the description of this primal act of creation expands, quote, male and female created he them, end of quote, a reference that is dual rather than singular. In this way, we are shown the all-inclusive power of the creator as both singular and plural. The Soldier's Prayer in addition to offering a source of personal protection, 
Since the time of its origin, Psalms 91 has also been used as a prayer of protection by entire armies as they prepare themselves for battle. During World War I, for example, it was common for military units to be given the assignment of memorizing the soldier's prayer the night before battle. And in doing so, Moses' prayer protection occupied their hearts and minds, preparing them for the hand-to-hand -hand combat they were about to face on the battlefields of Europe. As mentioned previously, while the first two verses are often recited as a brief prayer protection, the entire prayer can be and often is used as well. Following is the complete version of Psalm 91 with the various names of God in individual lines emphasized for your convenience. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor from the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. How to use Wisdom Code Number 1 Please note, for the exercise that follows, you will need to shift your focus and your attention from the world around you to the world within you. For this reason, please do this only when you are in a place where it is safe to do just that. Do not attempt this technique while you're driving or operating heavy machinery or performing any task that requires your full undivided attention. From a place of heart-brain harmony, I invite you to recite this code line by line either silently, in your mind, or out loud, until you feel an increased sense of trust and certainty that you are not alone. The key is to embrace this code with a focus of awareness, breath, and feeling in the heart rather than in the mind. For convenience, I'll share one last time the abbreviated version of this code. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust.